Looks like maybe a few more. We see how many more are in the waiting, Jenna? You got most of them, I think. Yeah, people are still filtering in right now, yeah. but I'll get them in pretty quickly. All right. So just to uh, make sure everybody knows, we do record these. Um, I know some people were asking about the college town hall. I think it just went up on our YouTube channel shortly before this. Um, apologize that didn't go up maybe a little quicker, but Thanksgiving got in the way. Um, so this will be posted, recorded and posted. Um, uh, so this is our fourth town hall, um, two, one on college, one on the at-large playdowns. This is our second general one. Um, an opportunity for everybody to ask questions, raise issues, et cetera. I'm going to start, though, just share my screen quickly and just give everybody a few updates on what we've been doing, and then I'll open it up to everyone else. Um, see if I can be tricky and share my screen. It's like I can. Is my screen sharing? Yes, we can see your screen. All right, great. Um, so just uh, just a few things I want to touch on uh, and th on things we've been up to, things we've been doing. The Athlete Health and Safety Working Group is uh, had its second meeting last night. We have a really good group on that. Um, Alex Ager, uh, Mike Shaloub, Brian, Pit Brian Pitter, Jen Nagoyan. Uh, uh, now I'm now I'm losing track here. Um, Katie. Uh, and myself and Craig Perry from the uh, Athletes Health and Safety Council and Steph Seneker. Um, so lots of good progress so far. Brian's been outstanding. He did a lot of comparison of other ones. I think by next week we will have a new uh, process for reporting intakes and what happens, first of all, reporting in, what happens with reports that come in, and then what happens uh, if Safe Sport doesn't claim jurisdiction and it comes back to us? To us, how do we handle those reports? Um, so that's in the works. We are hoping. I'm hoping that working group is uh, ready to d disband by the end of the year with with most of the work done. Um, Arena Club working group that's led by Jane Sharp um, out from out here in New Jersey. We have a good group on that. They've got an active uh, team in Microsoft Teams and. Uh, I'm involved. I've been involved in one meeting. The next meeting, I think, is coming up on Saturday. Um, that's our working group to help figure out how we can better serve arena clubs uh, as an organization. So I'm uh, I'm confident that group will yield some good results. The DEI committee we met with uh, Brett and I met with, uh, and I think Daryl was on the call as well from our board uh, last Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving. Um, so they were very uh, provide a very detailed document on things they're looking for from us. And we had, a, I think, a productive discussion. Still lots of work to be done there. Um, I've been doing outreach to regions and clubs. Um, if you haven't, if you're a club leader and you haven't spoken to me yet, I'm, please reach out and I'll get back to you. I tr I'm trying to reach out to as many club leaders as I can uh, and speak to as many regional leaders as possible. The Governance 4.0 Ad Hoc Committee is forming. Uh, we've had people submit their submit their interest, uh, and I'm hopeful that the Brett and the board can will pull that committee together uh, in the next week or so. Um, championship and playdown sites. Uh, we're really close to announcing men's and women's nationals. Um, I'm going to tell you it's. Uh, I don't know how much I can reveal, but I'll say that I'll say that the uh, if you're in the Denver metro area, you'll be excited. How's that? Um, College curling, we are still looking. I had a good conversation with uh, Chris and Sam today. Um, for people who weren't on the college curling town hall, there was a fairly robust curling college town hall. Um, Gordon McLean, after that call, has led college curling for some time, has decided to retire from that position, um, which uh, so that that group is now where I'm working directly with them to get through the season, and then they're working on some new governance. Um, we have new facility openings. I'll be in Indianapolis on Friday. They have a new club there, Circle City Club, so that's exciting. There's a new club opening in Traverse City in the new year. Uh, Tom Violet, you might know, some curlers might know him, is going to be the manager up there. Uh, competitive success, we've had our national teams and our and other elite teams doing well out on tour, so that's been exciting. Uh, and uh, 
you know, we qualified through the PCCC. That was exciting, um, which is a new process now with the WCF. Uh, we have Matt Shiner, Don Wade, and uh, Michael Barr are working on updated instructor materials. We've updated the level one deck, still making revisions to that as it gets tested out. But uh, people have been using it. Matt used it. I used it at one at one level one clinic that I did, and it's going to be used this weekend in uh, in the Oakland area at their level one clinic. And the last thing is uh, our Columbia sponsor. Uh, we met with them just last week, and they're committed to curling. They remain committed to curling, so that's excited. They're a great partner of uh, of ours, and uh, I look forward to a lot of good things from them going forward. So that's uh, those are my updates. Um, I think I can stop presenting. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to uh, everyone who's out there for questions and uh, comments, etc. This is unusual. Well, I'll jump in. Uh, Thanks, really quick. This is th this is Pat again. Um, okay. I'm uh, in the process of working and I have a great relationship with Challenge Athletes Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed on Facebook uh, a few um, New York uh, was saying that they're getting involved with recreational curling for veterans, which is really good. Um, I'm not sure if everybody knows here. Um, but last July, we had the veterans uh, wheelchair games here in Phoenix, and we ran through 150 plus athletes um, in one day. And I made contact with all of those uh, VAs out there. I'm a veteran myself um, and Challenge Athletes Foundation. Um, if you've heard of it, great. If not, they're co hand in hand with wounded warriors it's all under one umbrella um and i've been working with those uh kinds of people and i've got three clinics lined up um one is this weekend in the bay area um wounded hand and all and then i got uh dallas in january and i'm working on the other one to finalize it so i can't say anything but uh, wheelchair side of it um, and working with the Veterans and Challenge Athletes Foundation is uh, is definitely uh, proceeding on a on a great aspect of getting them involved. That's terrific, uh, Patrick. I'm excited every time I hear about those veterans efforts. So thank you for doing that. Uh, busted up hand and everything. So much, much appreciated. Um, I'm going to be actually, Patrick, I'll be at the Wheelchair Mixed Doubles Nationals in Kettle Moraine in mid-December, sort of doing a, I'll be in the Twin Cities and then making the drive over and stopping in some Wisconsin clubs and I'll be there for yeah, the last I couple of days. Oh, I think you muted yourself, but I think, uh, I think I saw Joe's hand up. Maybe I see a couple hands up. Thanks, Dean. Uh, I appreciate you getting me early because I got a league game in a couple minutes. So I have a couple questions for you, real quick, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so I, I've been really impressed with a lot of things that you've saying about uh, you know, all the updates that you've had, um, putting on these town halls. I think that's a really good step that the organization's taken. I'm interested a little bit in the depth of the, of the um, actions that you've taken, particularly around the GMCC as a region. And so I and you had a uh, phone call with Bob and Kristen, and yeah. I was curious if you can talk a little bit more about the depth of that, and maybe if you've had any further conversations with them. Yeah, I haven't had, I had, well, I had one further conversation on another matter with Bob that was uh, productive, I think, for both of us, both of us trying to get to the source of a problem. But I think, you know, for this season, the two associations have agreed to uh, move through this season uh, in this in this current static form, I guess. Um, you know, as I always say to clubs in the geographic area of the GNCC, I encourage clubs to join both organizations. I think the GNCC does good work, and of course, I want people to join our organization. So we will operate. You know, we still need two at-large playdown sites, but I'm hopeful about at least one coming shortly. Um, and I would love it if some other clubs stepped up to run those, because no matter what you think about the GNCC USA curling dispute, 
All we're looking for this season is a path for every curler to compete in those events. So um, I would hope that people put their feelings about the about the dispute aside just for the moment to consider at least uh, hosting an at-large play on site. But yeah, I hope to continue to have conversations with Bob and Christian. I see no reason why we won't. I haven't talked to them since the one call I had with Bob last week um, on another matter. But um, yeah, I, I look forward to continued conversations with them. Okay, so there's no particular plan necessarily. It's sort of like as things arise that you'll have to make conversations. Well, I, I think what's what's driving what will drive the relationship, Joe, is is the work we're doing on a new governance uh, approach and a new membership model. And I certainly want us to be out in front of a new membership model. Um, I think there's a different way to to operate that uh, a lot of people would like. I've spoken to a number of people about it, including I met with all the Twin Cities clubs uh, a few weeks ago and had a really productive meeting with all their leadership. Um, and I think that, you know, if we pursue that membership model, there's a natural way for the GNCC to come back to the organization. So actually, that was the next question that I had, if you don't mind. I'm sorry if I'm going to not watch this for the next five minutes. Uh, but I did sign up using the Google form for, you know, information around 4.0. And I hadn't heard anything since I signed up. I don't know if that means that I'm not involved, that I won't be involved, or not asked to be involved. Um, which is okay. I just want to have some sort of closure on it, knowing whether or not I'm going to be considered for it or not. Um, is there any communication that's happened amongst people who signed up, or should I just be waiting to hear what's, how does that work? Well, I think it's a pretty important committee to put together, Joe. So I think there's going to be, a, I, I'd ask for a little bit of patience as it comes together. Um, and I think it's not, you know, look, I think it would be great if if everybody who wants to be in on it uh, gets involved, but anybody who's been on a large committee knows how ineffective that can be. So I believe that the board will be looking to fill skill sets, um, geographic distribution, probably club distribution from arena clubs, dedicated clubs, large and small. So I, if if you expressed interest and are not part of the committee, I certainly wouldn't take offense. And I'm quite confident that if you will, you'll be contacted, you know, as soon as the committee starts to come together. There's no I, I'm not going to no, take offense. I just want to know what the situation is. I didn't hear well, anything. that's that's the situation, that's I guess. I mean, that's about, okay, the, that's you know, I, I mean, I, I, yeah. I OK, and then the last thing we had talked a few weeks ago, you and I about Darwin Curtis. And I know you were going to talk to Eric about that, but I don't know if anything has come of that conversation, if we've had that conversation. I mean, right now we don't have Dar Curtis grants to give out is the best I can tell you um, at the moment. Uh, we may in the future, but right now, right now we don't. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. I will yield my time to the rest of the group. Thanks so much. Good luck in your game, Joe. Thanks. All right. Who's next? Get one hand up. Dean, it looks like we have a couple of questions in the chat. If oh, yeah, sorry. Some I'll of turn those. on the chat. Let me let me turn on my chat. Sorry. Um, Ryan asked if we're still. Yeah, I think that form is still open, Ryan, if you still want to say that you'd like to be involved. Um, by the way, even if you're not involved, I, I, I'm confident this committee will, um, you know, be engaged with the curling community and take ideas from the curling community. Um, so, yeah, but you can still put your name in, Ryan. Uh, I believe that Google form's still there, available. Um, Sarah asked if there's an update on Club Nationals location date. Sarah, I, I have to tell you, I was super disappointed and banging my fist on the ta on the, my desk this morning because I thought we had a site, um, and apparently we don't. So we are still working on that. I want a Club Nationals location uh, as much as anyone. Um, I'm really hopeful that um, this can be you know that I think it's a great event and we want to make it a great championship, but we need a host and I, I thought we had one, but um, they declined. So um, we continue to search for one. Um, I am actually, I don't know if anybody saw the uh, the uh, Canadian club championship that was played in the mall in West Edmonton. I'm actually going to be meeting with the CEO of Curling Canada next week. And one of the things we've 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 uh, broached the topic of having uh, our club nationals champion play their club nationals champion in some sort of event. Very preliminary, but I think that would be exciting and something I'd love to see. So maybe we can make that happen. Um, John says he raised his hand by mistake. <laughs> 
Actually, Nancy, you said let's let's go to a mall. There's the uh, some people might know here in New Jersey. There's the American Dream Mall, which is the same owners as West Edmonton and the Mall of America, and it's pretty much the same chaos in there. But they do have a uh, they do have a full size NHL size rink, and I've met with them. And I think Aaron and I, our events manager, have a call with them next week tomorrow. They they were. You know they're they're interest very interested in doing an event. Um, there's certainly some logistics to work out around that, including how much you know how we can control airflow and humidity. But um, we're definitely exploring it. So that's the chat. Is there another hand up? Nancy has her hand up. Okay. Hi, Nancy. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are things in Denver? Awesome. Good. We, uh, you know, I am all about the junior curling, and um, we are just about to meet with an athletic director for a high school, uh, quite exciting. a good size and very diverse high school. So uh, they're very excited to uh, start a junior. Uh, or a club, a curling club, I should say. Um, just wondering if USA Curling has any resources uh, or information on uh, best practices or uh, ideas for sure. getting that going. I mean, my first thing is to find out what financial resources they might have. Not that we want to make money on it. It's most likely going to be free um to could make money on it i mean people parents pay for kids sports so i would be afraid they, to they, make money on do. it they do <laughs> our main concern you know. is just our ice maker really and um covering yeah. that cost so uh yeah. so yeah i just don't know if i haven't been on usa curling website yet to see if there was something out there i'm really into um grant writing at the moment and taking a class on that so I'm hoping to get into that too and see if I can find some money that way. But take some money out of the tree there. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't have a specific high school program guide, but I think I don't know if you've seen our junior program guide. I think there are elements of that that would apply to a high school program. Um, so I can share that with you. Um, we are really actively trying to get a content platform going where these materials would be available. But for right now, we I can share it with you through Teams or SharePoint or um, whatever it actually is described as, but on the Microsoft platform. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, I'll share that with you. Okay. And I'd be happy to share ideas with you. I mean, I've, it's probably a good thing we didn't do it this year, but um, uh, I, I really am interested in the future and having a national high school championship. So um, I am too. I think very, it would be a great event. Much. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I'm grateful that we have Rock Creek because now we have 10 Sheets of dedicated ice. Right. Because, I mean, our junior program is is full, yeah. uh, which is huge. But um, yeah, we're just kind of using that downtime on a Monday afternoon for <laughs> a high school program. And from what I am hearing so far, uh, we've got quite a few kids interested. So I'm really excited. I, I think in Macca and in Denver, particularly, um, you're going to see a lot of incredible juniors coming out of here that's great i mean one of the things about high school and college programs is clubs can use them can use underutilized ice time especially right so i think that that's a great use of your your ice time your best asset every time it's empty it's not doing anything for you so that's terrific um and maca i mean actually we i i had conversations preliminary conversations with kansas city actually about having a junior bonds one of our junior qualifiers there so one of our junior qualifiers fails next year. I would like to have at a MACA club. So um, I hope we can get out there for that. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Dean, Thank this, you, is, this is Patigan hey, and Patrick. Nancy. Um, hey, I'm the junior director for the Mopec uh, region and also living in Wisconsin for nine years. Um, I did a lot of work with the juniors. I've been doing juniors since Andy was little. Um, so Nancy, I could talk to you about that as well. Um, there is a formula to get things going out to high schools. So maybe me and Dean and you can uh, talk about that later. 
Yeah, that's great. We, we should have uh, we should have sat down over beer when you were here for U eighteens, but um, maybe I'll see you in January. Are you going coming out for nationals? Maybe. I'm still working on my hand. All right, next question. Okay. We'll see you. I'll, bye. I'll be at nationals, Nancy. So yes, I'll, we'll I'll see you there. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Oh, sorry, I lost my pen there. Um, is there another question? There we go. Kathy Bentley. Hi, Kathy. Hi there. I uh, first of all like to say, I mean, obviously you've been very busy and we do appreciate the multiple town halls and, and the new committees. Um, so that's that's great. Um, that. I've I wanted to ask as a club, we need to decide very soon if we're going to join USA Curling for the next year or if we'll decline. If we do decline, it would be the first time ever that we haven't joined both. Well, I have so a short I mean, answer for you, Kathy. <laughs> 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 yes. I have a short answer here. I mean, I can just give you one answer right away, but keep going. I'm eager to listen. Well, I, I, I wanted to ask if, if you envision anything further happening before the end of the year, I know that's coming a quick, a quick that would sway our decision or do you have anything you'd like to share on what you see as what you expect I guess for timelines in USA Curling's I'll say recovery from prior leadership yeah I mean um I think well let's start with the the membership model I think that that is going to change I think there will be uh probably tiered individual memberships and some sort of club membership um that's the direction i see it going in of course i'm not the only one there's a there's a committee so we'll we'll all work through that but that's one direction i see that i think will be a positive change for most people it's a little daunting quite frankly for us because as a business we're going from a uh, a revenue stream that we've had for you know i don't know how long uh to to a different sort of revenue stream, I actually think it will be an opportunity and this is probably the moment to do it. So that I think is one thing, the membership model will change and I hope and I believe will be um, more accommodating to more curlers, more curlers will find a reason to join. So that's that's one thing. Then on the other, the other moments, I mean, I, I do believe that we are going to have want to do some healing among our regions and uh, and and make sure that uh, people feel heard. Plan to do that. Now, just quickly back to the membership model. I mean, we can't really change that this year. That's the one challenge, right? We have membership packets going out. We have things in place. People have already joined, clubs have joined, so we can't really change it this year. But next year, yeah, I think that that's going to be different. I think, you know, what we're trying to do every day, the whole organization, everybody in it is signal that we are actively listening and engaged and trying and i think everybody at usa curling thinks there's nothing we can't improve so we are trying to do a number of things better um and you know i, I think that that's the promise of the future i think this year i think you can expect our championship events to be better than they ever have been um provided we find two more host sites but uh i'm sure we will um, I think they'll be better than they ever have been. We have a renewed commitment to making every championship feel special. We've talked to Aaron Kaler and, and others about it, and we've said that when people come into a rink, into a curling club for a national championship, it shouldn't feel like they're coming into league night. We want to make everything feel special and exciting. Um, so those are good things, and we're rolling out more programs. I mean, we are... Um, you know, we're, we're going to have a program where clubs can engage with... Uh, a high level athlete to come in and help them. We have, um, you know, new uh, new clinics we're developing. Um, so more services uh, within our bandwidth. You know, we only have we're only so big as an organization. So we're going to try to do as many things as we as we can with the with the resources we have. But, you know, um, I can't say, oh, this is exactly why you should join USA Curling this year, other than to say, um, if you believe in curling, I think you believe in the value of a national organization. Um, and uh, I think supporting it, you know, my own opinion has value. Just as I've said, I've supported the GNCC since 2006. I've never played in a GNCC event. 
Um, but I, I have believed in what they do and, you know, wanted to support it and support their efforts. So um, I hope that people will give us the same consideration. Thank you. That, that was a that was a good answer. Thanks. OK, thanks, Kathy. Um, hey, Jeremy, uh, yeah, is that Jeremy Mallard from yeah, Silicon Valley? Um, yeah, you know, Jeremy, we have a mailing list for the newsletter. We might want to just do that with the town halls. Um, we're new to town halls, so um, uh, we try to post it on social. We're trying to have news updates regularly on our website. So um, if you uh, if you go to our website, most news is posted there and social. But yeah, we can probably get better with a few more emails. I, I said to someone here the other day, I don't think we've reached the point where people are tired of getting emails from us. So expect the cadence of those to increase. Bobby Todd asking, why is USA Curling having such a problem finding host sites? I think it's a it's an ongoing problem, Bobby. That's uh, one of the things that, that has happened in the in past five to 10 years is a lot of clubs make a lot more revenue than they ever did before from private events and corporate events. So they're reluctant to give up their club uh, to a national championship um, and maybe not capitalize on that opportunity, which I can understand. Um, we are we are working hard with any host clubs um, to help them uh, increase revenue opportunities when they run them. I know somebody says we historically haven't paid and we don't pay enough to overcome the lost income they might have from private events, but we do think when we partner with clubs, we can help them make revenue that that is substantial. And that happened last year. It happened at our junior events or U18s, um, and we think it can happen across all our championships. I understand that for a decade or so or more, clubs felt like uh, USA Curling uh, dumped a, an event on them and they were basically stuck running it uh, and with for a little financial gain. So we need to change that. Um, we also, I also think the volunteer lift is not going to be as heavy going forward. We're trying more and more to make sure that uh, we do as much of the lift as possible. I know if anybody's worked with Aaron Kaler, he he um, works really hard on that. He sources revenue. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I understand that clubs would like more money uh, every time we host an event, um, but you know, right now that's not in our budget. We're being conservative with our on our expense side this year, especially um, because we're, you know, we're we're fully aware that that we're not coming out of COVID. We're not exactly sure what our revenue picture looks like. So, I would love a day when we're. There's two things I would love. I would love it if there's a time when we are paying clubs more, but more significantly, I would love it when our championships are considered of such value that clubs actually want them because they know they can they can use them as revenue generators. So that's what we're working towards. I mean, I don't think it's it's frankly a, not a new problem. I mean, it's it's been a problem finding host clubs for some time, um, and that's partly on us and and uh, not Ewing doing enough uh, to make it appealing. Now, yeah, Rebecca mentions we do have ice making resources. We have Sean Olson, our head ice tech. He doesn't. He can't make it to every single national championship, but he gets to a lot of them. And he's if you do host a national championship, he makes himself available for consultation. We'll try to do a visit if he can make that work. So that's an advantage. Um, and I know most clubs have benefited from that. But I, I think the big thing is I understand clubs don't want to burn out volunteers and they want to make money. And, you know, we're going to work to help clubs do that. Just to follow up with um, what you were talking about, if I, about the finances, I understand. I, I see that Eric Gleason is on the call, and I was wondering if he could give like a brief update as to the state of USA Girling's finances, because I've heard, I'm not certain this is sure or not, but that there's a like, that USA Curling is like 300 grand in debt. And I just, is well, that not true, Bobby? But no, um, I'm asking. Like, yeah, no, I know, but it's not true. I, I'll share a screen just because I know some people want to know um how financials look i'll show you our our updates for this our our budget for this year um if that's something that you're interested in that would be awesome okay so i'm going to show you an inf infographic version eric's welcome to to offer any um additional information but um hang on just a sec i gotta get out of this
share my screen. Dean, while you're pulling that up, I can I can just speak high level if you want me to. Yeah, that'd be great, Eric. Bobby, thanks for the question. Um, you know, so we're you know, a couple months into this fiscal year, we put together for the full year a balanced budget um, with some revenue increases expected when we first put the budget together um, with some investment then towards programming and additional things we want to do on the expense side to offset that. So um, as we've sort of revisited that throughout the last few months and, and the status of things, we've put together a more conservative approach to make sure that, you know, different scenarios are planned for now where if certain revenue lines don't come in as originally budgeted for, we've got a plan in place uh, to offset uh, some of the investment on the spending side to make sure we still come out at break even or as, cl as close to break even as possible. So, and we could add on that expense side, I think, Eric, that um, one of the expenses we cut was Curling Night in America. That was an expense. Uh, I forget what that was on our balance sheet as, but um, that was something we didn't see uh, being something we could do this year. We'd like to return to some sort of televised event going forward. Um, but yeah, I think we're being cautious on the expense side. But um, I didn't mean to overreact there, Bobby, by the way. I just sometimes struggle with people um, who are convinced it's completely dire. And that's not to say that we don't have challenges ahead, but I think we can manage them, especially if we have some support from the curling community. Um, one thing I just wanted to touch on quickly, this is why I had these, was you know, this concern that, that we use, uh, how we fund our teams. Um, and in, you know, if you look on the, this graphic, our, all our funding for our national teams and our, and our elite athletes is from USOPC funding. We receive 1,285,000 from them. Um, you can see have how, how it's spent. Most of it goes to athletes programming, staffing. There's a junior dev pool. There's a pair of wheelchair program. Um, but those are, that's where those dollars come from. And then just to touch on a, just a graphic here on what Eric was touching on, uh, our projections for this year. Um, we actually scaled down our membership revenue projection based trying to be conservative, expecting that maybe some clubs don't want to support us this year. We're hopeful most will, but if they don't, we're, we're anticipating being down there. Um, our other revenue events, championships, donations, sponsorships, uh, which we always want to grow. Um, and then we make a certain, we bring in a certain amount of revenue from courses, certifications, clinics, other activities. Um, and then on the spend side, um, you can see, you know, the bulk of it goes to everyday operations like staffing and rent and insurance and um, et cetera, safe sports certifications. Um, we have 110,000 budgeted here for marketing media web streaming. We're planning to web stream as much as possible this year. We will close to an agreement to web stream uh both our men's and women's and our mixed doubles but we don't want to stop there so we're hoping that we can source dollars to bring more more web streaming uh, of all our events um and then we have certain expenses on the championship side right so the championships side we certainly have expenses there that that impact us but um that's sort of a high level picture of what we see coming up this year um you know we we uh Obviously, yeah, when we had, you know, Curling Night in America was something that's a nice product to have, but it's not something we can do this year. So we took it out of our, uh, out of the expense side. Any other questions on the? Thank you. Okay, thanks, Bobby. Just looking here, I see Jonathan. Um, yeah, fee structures for the structure of playdowns in future seasons? It's a good question, Jonathan. Um, and we just had that discussion here internally. Um, I think it's something that needs uh, some careful reflection in this off season, um, because one of the things that, that happened is we have a number of national championships that don't have a playdown structure where teams are qualifying like five and under, or even our men's and women's and mixed doubles are qualifying through bond spiel events, qualifier events, et cetera. And then others have a playdown structure with regions. Um, 
so we need to re we need to revisit that and and because there are some national championships quite frankly where you don't pay to to be in it until you're actually qualified for it and others where the payment for it begins earlier at playdown time so um it's antiquated and it's it will be revisited and reviewed and and changed so it's uh you know as as fair as possible um lauren yeah this set of infographics sure we can make it available on the website um i hope so um rebecca clark asked if TS tsn is going to come back um tsn wanted um they wanted a retainer for their services um that was and we weren't comfortable this was back in june and we weren't comfortable um to uh in working with a production company on that kind of retainer basis production is generally a a project-based work um and then uh they've told us that they are officially retired from the web streaming business but i think we do have a pretty good partner lined up nancy you know you know one of the things we i will say is i know that um you know, I, I, we've always been a very affordable sport, and I think we should be proud of that and want to continue that. But I still know that our sport is pretty reasonable compared to a lot of other youth sports out there. Um, now, I want to make our game as accessible as possible. Um, so we certainly aren't looking to make money on the backs of our participants. Um, we are hoping that we can cover our championship costs um, with these things, but long term, um that's not really a feasible solution for us i mean we don't want to be doing that um but there are going to be fees involved and as we offer better and better championships and events that are more that are that have more teams etc you know some of those costs you know will probably reflect that but my belief is we need to make sure we offer good value right so if we offer championships that are well run and uh participants enjoy um then i think uh we're we're offering good value and, and frankly maybe at times in the past over the past decade we haven't done that so that needs to improve dean it looks like we have a hand up right now yeah sorry i didn't i see that i'm not sure who it is but go ahead if your hand's up oh hi this is uh, uh scott pyroth from long green Hey Scott, uh, had, how are you doing? Good. I had a couple of questions. Uh, first sure. of all, thank you for doing this. This is more communication than we've had from USA Curling that, you know, in the last month and in the last 25 years. So uh, it's appreciated. Um, I wanted to ask a couple of questions about staffing. Uh, sure. I, I don't think you can do everything. So who's in charge of doing your all job of, you know, running instructor clinics and managing things like that? And then the other question that kind of goes along with that before everything kind of went to hell here. Uh, there was an advertisement for a DEI coordinator, and I wondered if that was still going forward and and what the status of, you know, DEI efforts in general are, at least in the short term. So two great questions there, Scott, and appreciate both of them. Um, yeah, we like, as Eric mentioned, uh, um, we're being pretty conservative on the expense side right now. So um, I think, you know, I've asked and our staff didn't need to be asked, but everybody's uh, stepping up and doing a lot of extra work. Um, I don't see replacing my position immediately. I would like to, um, but um, we want to manage through this season and uh, keep our eye on the financial picture, et cetera. Um, so we are, uh, we'll probably do some contracting of some communications roles, some communications work, um, but you're right uh, at some point, we need to add staff, um, but I think we're no different than a lot of small companies maybe, like we're not a big staff, but we're in a situation where we wanna be conservative with the dollars we spend. And um, frankly, I hope that our staff continues to, uh, to be willing to step up and do the work they're doing and step up in a variety of ways, including doing things that their job never really entailed in the, in the first place, but we'll get through that. Um, and then your second question on the DEI director, it's absolutely a position I'd love us to have, um, but what I have done instead right for right now is re-engage with the DEI committee. Um, I've told them that we're not going to be hiring a DEI director just because it's an expense side uh, item that, that isn't really 
feasible right now. I hope it is in the future. Um, but for now, I'm going to lean and we're going to lean on the DEI committee to guide us in that area. And we have a lot of smart people on that committee. Um, and, and I think we can work well with them and uh, hopefully get to a point where then a DEI director makes a ton of sense too. Um, uh, and then certainly bring that person on. There's probably a couple of hires in between there we could make, uh, you know, if just in my one month so far, if I look at it, I think um, a compliance officer would be a good position for us to have. That's someone who deals with athlete health and safety and safe sport. Um, and that's something that larger as NGBs grow, they typically hire. That would be a probably a good position for us. Um, and, you know, but I, I think I think we have the basics of a of a pretty sound organization in terms of structure, but there are definitely holes we'd like to fill going forward. One other thing on that too, Scott, is I'm actually leaning on volunteers a little more maybe than we have in the past. So, um, and uh, frankly, I've been encouraged by how the Curling community has been willing to step up um, and engage and work on things. And, um, you know, it makes me proud to be a curler, quite frankly, because these are people who are, you know, just love the game and love the sport and want to help. And um, what we want to do as an organization is make sure we're giving them meaningful opportunities to do so. Did I answer both questions? I think so, but maybe not. I, I think so. Um, maybe the only thing that was missing was uh, like, you know, icebreakers program. Is anything happening with that in the in the short to medium term? Yeah, in the in the short term, I hope so. Um, you know, that was a program that I started with Deb Martin, but yeah, it's it's unfortunately hasn't been a primary focus of attention. Um, you know, but I Deb Martin's on my Monday night team, so um, I, I hope that we can get that start again and learn from what we didn't get right in year one, to be honest. Um, I will say that that kind of work is not easy, right? It's difficult and it takes uh, consistent, persistent effort. Um, so, yeah, we need to jump back into that. And, um, you know, I'd be happy to engage a, a working group on that as well. I think, you know, we have the DEI committee and they have a number of issues themselves, but um, that, they, that they tackle. But, um, yeah, maybe that's the best way to go with it, to get people reengaged with it. Because it's something that matters to me for sure. Um, and, you know, I was a little disappointed in, you know, my own effort, frankly, last year that we just didn't get it rolling as, as much as we'd like. But um, not through lack of effort, it just didn't quite come together. And we learned some things about what we can expect. So I'm going to scroll through the chat. Um, so quickly, Bobby, yes, we are talking to Curling Stadium. John Benton resigned from the board. Um, so it's John Benton, Cam Rittenauer, and Jerry Gertz are with Curling Stadium. Uh, those are the people we're in discussions with about streaming. Um, Alan McNeil, hi, Alan. Um, I saw Alan and Eveleth, where he did a fine job as an official. Um, so the plan for replacing independent directors, uh, that's a great question, Alan. And we do, we are working towards replacing independent directors. And I've had a number of conversations uh, with David Patterson at the USOPC, who um, engages with NGBs on good governance uh, and talking about filling those independent director roles. And we will be looking to those with an eye towards making sure our board uh, is diverse. Uh, we also want to fill some specific skill sets. Um, three that would probably make sense would be someone with financial acumen. You know, an attorney usually makes sense. Um, and then probably someone who has experience in another sport would make sense. So those are three. Doesn't mean those would be the only ones we'd consider, but those are certainly three skill sets that would make sense. Um, and yeah, we'd, I'd, I'd welcome to having, you know, three really talented, engaged independent directors, and I think we'll have them. Uh, those are kind of people that you don't source just overnight, um, and it usually takes a bit of cajoling to get someone uh, of a high level to take on a volunteer position. So, um, uh, but we'll we'll have that, I and mean, that's probably one of the 
easier things for us to pull together. So looking Carl Ball. Um, will national competition dates become similar year to year? Carl, that's the, that's the plan, right? We'd like to have them consistent and we'd also like to spread them out more throughout the season. Um, that means spreading them out more throughout the season makes us a better partner for the clubs we're working with. I think we'll be able to deliver better events if we spread them out. That's why U18 was moved. Um, now I could see, and we'd have to talk to Rock Creek or whoever hosts next year, this I could see U18 moving back another week uh, just to give, because I know a lot of regions like that uh, window between Christmas and New Year's for their U18 playdowns, and another week might just make it a little easier to plan, which I can understand. Um, so we'll review all the dates, but um, that's one that's likely to stay in January, quite frankly, um, just because there's no other, we don't have another championship there right now. Um, and it's it's one that fits pretty well there. Um, it's a tricky one, U18, because, you know, people with high school kids, every, you know, they might have exams in February. So January was sort of picked because it seemed like the most innocuous month as well. But um, we're trying to get to consistent dates with our with our championships. Um, Lauren asked, are there opportunities for volunteers to help with operations? Um, probably, Lauren. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what part of operations you want to be involved in, but um, uh, I'm happy to uh, happy to uh, hear, hear what skills you might bring. So um, reach out to me. You can send me an email or call me. Um, Rebecca asked, what is Icebreakers? How is it different than DEI? Well, Icebreakers is a DEI effort, but it was uh, something... I launched with Deb Martin, where we were trying to engage the BIPOC community in curling, trying to be programmatic about it and actually invite people from the BIPOC community into curl. And then along with that, also figure out how to make sure that our facilities, you know, were welcoming to those groups, but really try to be intentional in our outreach instead of just um, hoping that, you know, people from other communities came into curl. It, it's in, um, Deb's a good friend of mine. She started curling in 2010, and I often joke that, you know, she started in 2010 with her wife Charlotte, and I thought, oh, this is great. We've got, you know, we've got uh, black women curling. This is fantastic. And then I looked around a number of years later and realized there was only one additional black woman curling in that time. So that's why I think it's an issue we need to tackle. I do believe in tackling the issue. I, in my first month, I, I'm not going to tell you that I've, I've been able to focus on it much, but it will be a focus. Um, Um, Bobby's asking if it's a conflict of interest to work with Curling Stadium based on John. I don't think it's a conflict, Bobby. Uh, I think they have a good product, and I think that's what I want to deliver to the curling community. Uh, I want a streaming company that's going to do a good job. Um, and, uh, you know, John resigned from the board. Um, you know, I actually, he resigned shortly after I texted him. I said, is this something you'd consider? And he, he resigned shortly after before we even started discussions. So, um, you know, if anybody knows my relationship with John Benton too over the years, it hasn't always been a hundred percent, uh, you know, we've had plenty of arguments, so it's not as if, we, you know, we haven't had debates about things as well. So, um, I also know Cam Rittenauer wasn't on the board as a curler and he's one of the, one of the partners in that company and I trust them to deliver a good product. Um, yeah, Nancy Mall noting that Denver is committed to mixed nationals for the next three years in mid-April. Um, uh, um, so, yeah, that's that's the kind of agreement we like to have these days. We're excited to be in Denver for three years, the same dates. Um, Rebecca Clark, yeah, I think John is amazing for USA Curling. John's put a lot of time into the game. And uh, like I said, he and I, he, he would admit that he and I have had plenty of friendly spirited debates about things. Uh, um but uh yeah he's been great he's great for curling he's contributed a lot to the game and and more than anything uh we wanted if we're going to stream we want to use someone who knows our game and can deliver a good product um you know so there's there's certainly value in that they also that company curling stadium is set up in kalamazoo which is helpful which we didn't know when we met talked to kalamazoo about hosting mixed doubles nationals but that will be helpful um and uh you know there's we're we're still working out an agreement on how we how we work with them but i'm I'm confident that it'll be uh productive for both of us
It's 8.54. I'll, I'll, I'm happy to go till nine if there's more hands up. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, my, I'm in the attic in my house because uh, when COVID started, I used to share, I used to share a home office with my, my wife, but when I started working for USA Curling, said I talked too loud on the phone, so I had to go to the attic. Um, Michael Levesque, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really have a question. It's more of an uh, observation, and, and uh, I work the Arena Nationals here um, at Eveleth. Yep, and, I remember and, you, Michael. Uh, the, you're the first president that's ever come to Arena Nationals. Um, I know a lot of people were surprised. I mean, you, you were first announced that you were the interim, and then it seemed like the next day you were there. Well, the timing was good for me, to be fair. I was glad <laughs> it was happening. <laughs> so. Well, well, that's true. Um, I mean, you got to, this will be an uphill battle, but you're certainly on the right track. Um, and I think uh, a lot of people are going to, you know, start taking notice and and, uh, and you'll win a lot of people over. And the the button that you gave me is, is on my club jacket. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that, Michael. Um, I am going. I am going to be at um, unless there's flight delays or I or I get COVID. Gosh, I hope I don't. Have, that doesn't happen. But I will be at every national championship this year um, for at least at least part of it, and probably surely for the closing ceremonies at at, at the very least. Um, uh, Jonathan Lee asks, how often do you plan to host town halls? Um, I think often, Jonathan. I mean, frankly, I I enjoy them. I mean, even when there's questions that are that are more difficult to answer than others, I'm still happy to hear them. And um, uh, I think too, uh, I look forward to having them because because I know there's been a couple of good ideas come out of them as well. And if it engages people in in things, I mean, I think right now the cadence is you know we this has been uh, I guess about a month since the last one. So I'm, I'm going to suggest we'll do at least one a month and, and maybe more depending on what it, what's up. Uh, and we certainly will do some certain special issues ones um, like we did with the uh, at large playdowns and college curling. So we're happy. I'm happy to do those. I, I, I guess I'll say at least once a month and probably a little bit more than that. Um, I think Bobby has her hand up or somebody else. Is that. Yeah. I just had one last question. Um, you sure. ended up hiring potentially and I could be wrong, so correct me if I am, a compliance person to deal with athlete safety, which I think is great. Um, I was just curious, if I wasn't sure what Katie Baker does as sporting director and if that would fall in her purview or I guess would that hire be necessary given the, um, you know, you said we're trying to save money and, you know, focus. So I was just curious about that. Well, I didn't say I was going to hire a compliance officer. I said that looking ahead, I could see that being a position we could hire. If you look at other NGBs, slightly larger than ours, that becomes a higher they make. Um, it's not really part of Katie Baker's role, um, sporting director. She really oversees all the high performance programs. And in fact, it would be a bit of a conflict for her to be a compliance officer and be in between an athlete and safe sport. So um, right now, she and I are the interim people for safe sport reporting. We both want to change that as quickly as possible. And I hope at our next Tuesday athlete health and safety working group meeting, uh, that we have a new process and there's going to be safe sport people in that meeting and we we get some approval to move forward in that but it would be a it would be a conflict i uh for katie to be a compliance person well thank you i i wasn't exactly sure what um she did so thank you for the clarification sure i mean i think you could equate uh katie baker's role to that of an athletic director at a college in terms of how she manages the overall program Great, thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Um, I think Michael, that was Michael still his hand up, but I think you already talked to me and I appreciate that, Michael. Um, it's 8.58. I don't know how many people were on the call tonight, but I, I, I will say I appreciate everybody who's as engaged in curling as you are. Um, it's interesting, I was talking to our Columbia sponsors and I told them, you know, one positive thing out of these last few months is we have definitely been reminded of how passionate the curling community is um, and that people really care about this sport and are invested in it. Um, and we want to, uh, we want to, uh, you know, reward that. So we'll keep working to improve the things we do. Um, and I, I think we're headed in a, 
more in a positive direction. I think we have good people in place who are working hard. Yeah, Rebecca, we are talking to Columbia about about that um, Jersey designs with our names on the back. Um, you know, for them, it's a bit of a manufacturing thing and what they can commit to. But I, you know, in our in our meeting, Jessica Schultz and I were telling uh, telling them how how uh, how well they'd sell. I think, you know, you're talking about a company that sells millions of items through like a Dick Sporting Goods. So somehow we have to probably find the right retail way to sell them, which may be through clubs, um, but uh, we'll work on that. Yeah, Jonathan, in the past, there was a system for requests for ruling in case there's questions about event eligibility. Um, right now, I, I believe in the rule book, those requests go to the CEO and then would be reviewed with the staff. So um, uh, I will investigate that because I'm not exactly sure where that process is and if it's clear enough. And if it isn't, we'll uh, we'll make sure it is. Yeah, agreed. Um, Everybody's got merchandise ideas. I'd love to sell a ton of merchandise. So uh, ask Eric or Aaron Kale or how I talk about wanting to sell merchandise. So hopefully at our at our nationals uh, in that Rocky Mountain location, I mentioned to the 68 people here, just keep it quiet just for a little bit. I'm not very good at keeping secrets apparently, but um, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll have some of that stuff there. So it's nine o'clock, so I'm gonna wrap up unless uh, somebody has a last question to throw at me. And I'll thank you for your time. Um, I hope uh, if you're curling, maybe you're curling nine o'clock draw, you can still get out there. I curled the 630 draw last night at a stunning 7-6 victory. <laughs> All right, um, with my wife, who's a, who's a 50 year curler. So thanks everybody. Uh, yeah, good curling and uh, we'll see you again. And uh, hopefully I'll see some of you in the uh, Midwest swing through Wisconsin, Minnesota in mid-December. Or if you're in uh, Indianapolis, get out to Anderson, Indiana. I'll be there this weekend as that club opens. Take care. Bye-bye.